Hello, hello, this is Lori with Quilters Headquarters in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. We are working on our London Blues Block of the Month quilt. And today we are on page six. This is a relatively easy block to make. We have a um, square and a square in the middle. These are called combination blocks right here. And these are sort of, I don't know what blocks they are called, but they're sort of like combination blocks. So basically we have half square triangles, squares, that makes that unit. This is the combination block and the square and a square. So you've all made half square triangles before, but we'll go through it again. And here we go. So our half square triangle units are made out of, and as you already know, I'm making mine out of different fabrics. So my fabrics, um, half square triangle made out of two and 10. These are my two and 10. And so what we're going to do is draw our lines. If you wanted to save time, which I'm going to do today, normally I use my quilter's magic wand and I draw lines on both sides. You can also draw lines on one just down the middle. So this is a different way of doing it. And then you're going to sew a quarter inch from each side. So um, many people will find it easier to, um, you know, draw the two lines. You get quite a bit more accurate that way. But if you're fairly confident that your quarter inch seam is not, oh, see, habit. <laughs> if you're fairly confident that your quarter inch seam is, you know, not too big, then you're safe doing it this way. Otherwise, if you have a tendency to go big on your quarter inch seam, you might want to draw both lines. Otherwise, you may not have enough to trim to measure to the measurements you need. So as you can tell, I use I usually draw both sides of the quarter inch or both side both seam lines since I just did that on one of them. But today I'm going to try to sew on either side a quarter inch and just chain piece this one since I drew on drew the seam line I will sew on the line Don't see my cutting gizmo anywhere. Oh, geez, it's right in front of me. Hello. There's my cutting gizmo. All right, so I've got my two lines sewed. And I need to go grab a, oh, here's my ruler. This was a sweet little ruler from uh, Creative Grids, just six by three inches. Just kind of handy as a small ruler to have around for little things like this. I like it. There, two at a time. And I will press to the dark. Okay, so I have them all pressed. I pressed to the dark side. I don't know that she told us to do that. I should look. Nope, I don't see that she told us to do that, so I just did. She didn't tell us which way to press. 
So I'm going to go ahead now and trim them down to two and a half inches. And remember, as I've told you before, if you've got one of these kind of rulers that has this extra half inch on two sides, you want to be careful of your measuring. So if you go this way, you're going to use this line here. You're, it says, actually says three inches. If you go this way, which is the easiest to not make a mistake, there's no half inch extra here, so your two and a half inch line is here. And always line up this 45 degree line right on your seam, and you should be good to go. I trimmed up one side, lay the other side down here. I like these quilter select rulers because they don't slide. You will also, also often see me use uh, the tucker trimmer, which I'll use when we do our combination units. And you'll see why in a minute. Okay, so I've got these all trimmed up two and a half inches and our next step is going to be to make these corner units right here and to do that we're making four each so basically I'm kind of a speed demon on this stuff I like to just chain piece so I'll lay them out four layers at a time, all orientated the correct way, like my picture. And let's see, fabric four, which is that one, and fabric six, which is this one. So if you get confused, just look at your pictures again. You, get, you have the dark side facing in and look what I did I did it wrong I think if you turned them around would it matter mm, I don't think so no it wouldn't so as long as you've got these dark sides facing in you should be good to go can't screw it up right <laughs> okay so I'm just going to you know, run all, th all the layers through. So I'll pick up this and I'll flip it over this way. And I don't turn or flip as I bring it over to my needle. I just put it under the needle like this. And I'll do that with each, each one of these. Okay, get my handy dandy gizmo, get them cut through real fast. And I'll go ahead and I'll press to the dark. Well, I lied, I didn't press to the dark always. I just pressed to the solid square here. So, we'll lay these out like so so by pressing to the solid square I can nest them and see what I mean this seems going that way that seems going that way and they will nest right at the seam line is that cool or what 
Okay, I'll go ahead and sew these together. When I press these, I will press one this way and one that way, and then I'll get the four patch right here in the middle. Make sense? Since she's not telling us which way to press, that's what I'm going to do, and I'll hope for the best when we put the quilt together. Some days you have to pay attention to what you're doing. I swear not a day goes by that I don't have to rip out something. Okay, all fixed and pressed and sewn together correctly. Easy peasy. My seam ripper is my best friend. <laughs> yes, it is. I don't know what I'd do without it. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is make our square in a square. You've seen me do this before. Now I like to use Studio 180 square in a square tool. And one of the things that we get from, we're going to be making a four and a half unfinished block and our directions tell us to cut fabric, I believe it's fabric six. Yes, fabric six, and we're supposed to cut three and three eighths. You'll be cutting fussy cutting. If you don't know what that means, that means, you know, like you'll have a flower in the middle and you, and you, you know, center that flower and cut around it. So on our tool here. Sorry about the glare. It's hard to get away from that. On our tool here for a four inch finished, which is what this would be. It's four and a half inch unfinished, but four inch finished means when it's in the in the whole block. Let's see if I can do this. Okay. And so we're supposed to cut, I think it was three and three eighths. If you want it to be exactly accurate, you would use this tool and check your measurements. So it's just, it's like a thread smaller than three and three eighths. Uh, Deb's gone ahead and Deb Tucker, the inventor of this tool has gone ahead and you know, made this exactly accurate. Three and three eighths less a hair. So that's just how much I, I trimmed off. But it, you know, it just makes a slight difference if you want to be really, really accurate, which I strive to be accurate. I don't get too excited if it's not perfect though. And then we got to cut these in half. I don't cut them in half until I'm ready to use them because they do have a tendency to stretch on the bias here. So I would suggest that you do the same. So you will sew this side and this side, and then we'll sew this side and this side. I'm anxious to see what my quilt's gonna look like since I just picked out fabrics from a line without too much thought to what they're going to, you know, what fabrics are going to sit next to. I figure they're all from the same line of fabric, so they should look good together. Let's hope I'm right. I starched my fabrics pretty good before I started this, so my half square triangles won't stretch too much. If you didn't, 
start yours. No big deal. You just want to be careful not to handle it very much. And also put your triangle on the bottom. So you have your, your stretchiest part here. Oh, you can't even see what I'm pointing to. So you have your stretchiest part here. Right here, this is bias. And so if you lay that on the bottom, your feed dogs will help keep those um, from stretching. I don't always do that. I sometimes forget. You've probably seen me do it in other videos where I forgot to do that, but it's, it's a good thing to know. And then I'll go ahead and press to the outside, press towards the triangles. Okay, so like that, so I pressed towards the triangles. And now I'll sew these sides on. I just eyeball, centering it just by looking at it. Because we're going to trim it down, so if you get it, you know, pretty close centered, it's not going to be too far off because we're going to trim it to perfect. That's my favorite way of trying to reach perfection on my blocks. I strive for it, but I have to live within my limitations, right? So we'll press towards the outside, towards the triangles. And there we have it. So now what we need to do, I like to use this tool, like I said before. And I will pick out my four and a half inch line here is what we're going to trim to. So I think you can see this. I have my four inch line right in here. So I have these X's that I'm gonna match up to my inside square. So, gee, look at how pretty that came out. So my X's in every corner came out pretty darn good. Is that cool or what? Right there. So I'll go ahead and trim. I really do need a new blade. All right, so I've trimmed two sides. I'll turn it around, trim the other side. So now my four and a half inch line here on both corners, or on one corner, I've got more places to look at my measurement. Perfect. I've got it centered here and here, and my lines are lined up here. Beautiful. That came out just perfect. Love it when a plan comes together. All right, so the next thing we're going to make is these are called, let's see if you can see it, these are called combination units or hourglass units. So we'll put these together. Let's see, I had those lined up. Now this is where <laughs> I'm not sure about my colors coming together, but we'll see how it goes. So these two and these two. So the first thing we're going to do is make half square triangles. We'll cut those, we'll cut those in half. We'll make our half square triangles of fabrics four and eight and eight and ten. So this is my fabric eight 
and my fabric 10 and this is my fabric 4 and 8. So we'll draw our lines and make half square triangles and then we'll cut those in half, flip them around. So watch and learn, right? So these are pretty big squares. I'm going to go ahead and I might as well draw on both sides of the center. I love this uh, white chalk pen from Bowen. It's a nice fine line. see that pretty good. I'll do the same with this and then I'm going to go ahead and sew down on the lines that I just drew all about. Why is it so blurry? There we go. All right so I sewed my two lines. I'm going to cut those in half. I'm going to do two at once. There we go. And I will press to See, she doesn't tell us. Press away from fabric eight, it says. Away from fabric eight. So, this is my fabric eight, so I press away from that. I always finger press first. That way I don't get a, a smile. It, it helps to not distort that seam because if you press too hard, you can really distort it and your, your seam will smile at you. So if I finger press first, it seems to really alleviate that issue. It stays nice and straight all the way across. Like I say, I don't, I don't manhandle it. I am very um, hands off with it for the most part. And then I'll press with my iron, press them down real good. Yes, I use steam. A lot of people don't like to. I love steam. It just makes it lay flatter. So now what we're all used to, so don't be going and, and uh, squaring this up in any way. So what we're going to do next is we're going to cut them in half like that. So cut them in half this way and then pair them up. Okay, so she has us cut these in half. So this is my A unit, fabric four and fabric eight. And we want to cut corner to corner. However, if you want it to be really nice and straight and centered, you really do want to lay this on a line here. Now see, I'm a little bit off on this corner. So if I were to lay mine corner to corner it kind of skews a little bit not too horrible but I'm also see I'm looking at this line too I kind of want that as straight across as I can get it as well and then cut corner to corner I'm, I'm a hair off on one end but that's not too bad so I'll do the same with this. I'm going corner to corner as well as matching that just so it's, you know, right. 
So that's my A unit. Here's my B unit. So notice I'm only cutting one at a time so that I can, I can do that. There's my corner to corner and my seam line. Anytime you can use more than one registration to line up your rulers, it's a good thing to have. So this is my B unit. This is my fabric 8 and 10. And then when I look at the layouts, so we want to pay attention here. So we have, we have four and eight, which is my four and eight, and eight and 10. And then you want to lay them out like this. It's supposed to automatically um, clear up, but okay so I need see now this one is my four and eight but my four is on the wrong side right so I'm looking at this one so I'll find my four and eight four and eight four and eight I'm guessing I'm gonna make a couple of these see that doesn't work four and eight four, eight. And I'm going to pair it with, see that doesn't work, eight and ten. Eight and ten. So I'll sew those together. And then my next one is four and eight this way. So I'm just looking at the pictures. Four and eight that way, and four and eight this way. And you get the same thing. Oh, I can't go any bigger. See, they both go the same way. Like so. So I'll go ahead and sew these together. And I always um, nest these two seams together right here. Nest those two. All right, you should be able to just kind of slide them together. Let's see how we did. Okay. So I'll do the same thing I always do is make my little four patch right here in the middle. And we'll turn around and see how well we did. Look at that. Beautiful. All right, I'm going to go ahead and press these, and I'll be right back. Okay, this is where I like to pull out my tucker trimmer. This tool is especially good for combination units. So one of the things I like about it is I'm going to be squaring up to a uh, four and a half inch square. And whenever you're squaring to half inch increments, one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, whatever, you have your half square circle or your half circle in your top right hand corner if you're right handed or your top left hand corner if you're left handed. And then these lines across here, I'm using my four and a half. So I'm gonna have one line going down this seam and one, my four and a half line going down this seam. 
So there's my four and a half inch line. That's going to go this way, and this is the center line. So they meet right in the middle, just like that. So I know exactly where to trim. If I were using this ruler, I would have to figure out where that center point is. So that center point on this ruler would be half of two and a half, which is two and a quarter. So I'd go to two and a quarter this way and two and a quarter this way. So that center is right there where there's no mark. So that's where I would have to go. I don't know what is happening to my phone. It's supposed to automatically uh, focus, but okay. So there would be right there, right in the middle of nowhere is where that two and a quarter inch would be. I don't have to worry about it when I use the tucker tool. It's right there for me. I line it up here and here and I'm good to go. So I'll trim and I'm right-handed, so I have my half circle in my right hand, upper right hand corner. And I'll turn it around, line up my four and a half inch lines here and here, and also here and here. So I've got lots of registration lines to line up with, so I shouldn't have any problems. It will be perfect four and a half. Okay, I'll come back when I have the other three trimmed up. Okay, having the right tools makes such a difference, doesn't it? All right, so let's see, go in. All right, so now I am going to lay out the whole unit, or the whole block, and we'll sew those together. So, by the way, any tools that I use or talk about, um, you can always find on quiltersheadquarters.com. Just hit the shop menu. And there shouldn't be any problems finding them. So this is how my block is going to look if I get it turned right. This goes to the outside. So I don't know why I can't zoom in. Oh, maybe because I have to do that. Ah, well, I will too close to it. Let's see. I will fix that in a minute. So my block's going to look like this. Those colors are pretty interesting together. <laughs> okay, so there's my block. I'm going to do what I always do and turn right over left, right over left, right over left. I'll take those to my needle, sew those, and I'll come back and put these together. Okay, so she didn't really tell us which way to press on this pattern, so I made the executive decision to press towards the combination unit. So all my seams are going to this unit just because of the thicknesses that we have to contend with. If you fold back like this thickness, that's just too heavy and there's no extra thickness this way. So let that one lay flat and that's how I'm pressing. So I'm pressing towards the combination units. Okay, as I said, I'm pressing towards the combination units. So when I sew these rows together, they will nest as well. I'm 
trying to get it to focus. Throw a little light on it. So you can kind of see it right there. Sometimes you have to ease a little bit of it in to get those ends to match. Just like that. Pretty sweet. And then when I open it up, now when I start sewing my rows together, I generally press open. And I think I'm going to do that now too. All right, there we have it. Um, these colors, I don't know why they're turning so blue there. They're actually a deep dark teal. I'm actually really liking it. I think it's, I wasn't too sure if this green and the teal were going to look good together, but they actually do. On my camera though, it's definitely not that blue color that I'm seeing. But anyway, I did press my seams open. There's a little bit of thickness there, but if you use steam, you can get them flattened out. All right, there we have page six, block six, all done.